Hello Lola's, welcome back to my channel guys. I have a couple things I want to say to you. Um, first, make sure you are subscribed to this channel. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up by hitting that like button. Also, if you want to be a part of the paid channel membership, it is $4.99 to join. You must be at least 18 years old or older to join. Um, I do exclusive live streams in there and exclusive content in there. Also, a lot of times you are the first to know inside that membership when a baby is available as well as other little whatever spontaneous perks um, that come along. Sometime, you know, like if I do a live stream out here, which I call the gym pop, I will not, after it's live, I will not leave it up, but I will reshare it in the channel membership. Sometime I don't, sometime I do, but um, yeah, especially if the live got really crazy, sometimes I'm like, ah, well, I'm going to leave that out there, but I'll put this in here. But anyway, today I have baby Nori, Nori Brielle. Nori is the uh, silicone baby uh, from Jennifer uh, Price and from Silicone Studio. I am going to get her dressed, I think. I have an outfit, a dress, and diaper cover. It was one of the things that um, Hope Ivy Mason, uh, Hope Mason Ivy, oh, God. Oh, yeah, I always do that. Um, she is a sculptor and artist. She had sent me some things a while back for another baby that I had, which was smaller than this baby. They were both supposed to be 14 inch. Um, but I kept, when I sold that baby, I kept the clothes that she sent for me. Because I figured I would have a small baby again. Because I actually like the little ones. And. So. With that being said. I don't know if she can fit it. Try not to, try not to block too much of the light. Sometimes when I get in here. Now. So she, my, my Nori has full armatures in her legs and in her arms, um, which allows her to do lots of crazy little poses and hold them without, you know, having to be propped or anything. Um, she does have what we call a jelly belly. Um, the last baby I got belly is a lot more jelly than this, but um, I do like the little softness in the belly because the belly is usually the thicker fatter part of the silicone and often when you see babies it's really cute to see their stomach pushed out as a full body but it actually usually be pretty firm and makes the baby a little bit more stiff and rigid um so therefore i like when they kind of squish the tummy out make the tummy softer because it's just nice and it feels better to hold. She's poured in one piece. Um, someone asked me the other day what was the difference between silicone and reborns. If you're new to this community or this doll industry, um, platinum silicone is like a medical grade silicone and it is very soft and feel more skin like. The vinyl is, you know, like. I don't want to say like a Walmart doll because it's not as hard or, you know, like plasticky as a Walmart doll, but it is a more hard substance. Um, Sometimes, you know, we texture them and it gives them a certain feel. Now, here's the thing. Where these babies feel great, undressed, you know, or whatever, the reborn still feel really nice when they're in their clothes. Um, the only thing is like if you touch a vinyl baby, like say you close your eyes and you touch a vinyl baby and then you touch a reborn, you I mean a silicone, then you're probably going to most likely feel like the silicone feels more real. Some people like the feel of the silicone. Some people is really creeped out about it. Um, and they do get cold because of the, you know, like if the weather is cold and they're in a cold climate the silicone will feel cold and then that's kind of freaky. But if you 
let them allow them to warm up or when they're next to you long enough just like your vinyl babies do this too um then it feels really really cool okay this one is not rooted yet <laughs> so she just have a little hair right there and i have taken my water bottle away because i am rooting and i don't I was trying to see how the baby hair curl pattern was going to be um, to see how I want to continue with the rooting. So I took I took that in my wear root. root. Right, let's see about this diaper cover. She wear micro preemie uh, diapers. She This baby is about 14 and a half inches. So you could go with 15 inch if you're buying clothes. But the thing I found about buying like preemie clothes, sometimes depending on where you're buying from, especially like sometimes with custom made stuff, it could be a lot wider. And I don't like that look. So like sometimes with the preemie store, certain items I won't buy because they fit kind of wide on them. I find a lot of like Sarah clothes usually fit a little bit more fitting to them. I used to have a lady that used to make me stuff for my babies this size. Um, but she's, I think she's doing more of traveling and, and living her best life. So she doesn't, the last order I asked for, she just stopped responding. So I don't have that connect anymore. Also, that's also a thing too with me, with my um, my shirts that I used to get done. I'm gonna have to find another person for that because she also used to do that for me too. I can't decide if this is supposed to go open this way. Yeah, I think it's supposed to go this way. I was trying to like do it open in the back or in the front. I don't know if this is gonna be too too small or not. And a lot of people use hand mitts when they're getting their babies dressed to make sure that they have all the fingers. I like to be able to feel the fingers when I push it through. So I don't always do that method. But if it works for you, it works for you. I just try to take my time. Silicone, I don't like to leave nothing. Like this is kind of got a little, little elastic in it and it could possibly be a little if it's too snug around her I won't leave it on that's usually how I am about that type of stuff this is a ball fit so it's a little bit more easier to know that you got all the fingers and she has armature so sometimes that armature will kind of help me but sometimes it is not my friend okay So as you can see, I'm trying my hardest to pull her clothes around her, but I'm also moving her armature to help tie her arm through like as if she was a real baby. The arm would move. So do that. And these button up. So I think she can kind of fit these but this is the thing that i would have to button this <sighs> yeah that just almost don't fit but it will fit but i don't feel like doing that but this is why i need her hair rooted because i don't have a hat necessarily to fit to match that i probably do if i go look flower yes baby little church mama um but yeah so that would be like a little outfit of the day so she can fit the diaper cover pretty well Not over on my back you 
this is the back of her head. This is what the back of her head look like, guys. Hold on. Let me, um. Let me get her posed, and then I'll zoom in for you guys. But I'm going to ch change her out of that. But it looks so cute on her. Oh, you guys can see pretty good. Yeah. For the most part, when it's, when I'm dealing with my full bodies, I usually paint the whole entire baby, even the head. Sometimes people like to leave the scalp a little lighter. I've tried that on a few babies, and I'm kind of going back to my old ways of just painting the whole entire head, the whole process. And sometimes I, I do like an extra modeling on the, the scalp. Just so when I root, it it gives that look through the, the hair. But let's see. That was kind of bent a little too much. So it's showing a lot of little rolls. But yeah. Um, you look so cute. That's her little back. I, I definitely like different babies i do different things so i accentuate places in different ones that i don't do on others i noticed when i did the little boy i did a lot more i think um accentuating certain parts of the sculpt itself i really liked him <laughs> listen if his mom had said, oh, I don't like him, <laughs> I don't want him, I probably would like, okay, fine, that's good. <laughs> oh, gosh, see, this is this outfit was really kind of too tight. I might have to pull her up to get this off. Oh, my gosh, it's like, you know how we squeeze into a pair, a dress, and you have to work it across your And you have to work it across your head. And then when you get ready to take it off, you can't get out of it. That's how I feel I'm doing it. Don't do this. Don't ever put on something that's snug that you have to do this much work and dry clothes across your baby. Don't do that. Let me see. I'm trying to see what you guys can see. Yeah. Don't, don't do that because... It depends on how the baby is painted and all that stuff. You could possibly have rubs in the paint or, you know, possibly end up with a tear or something like that. <laughs> Fall back, sorry, boo, -boo. Um, So, yeah, try not to um, force clothes on them. I, I normally don't do that, but, again, this is why a lot of times us YouTubers have to be really careful because when we're doing stuff for a video, we can get carried away. And getting carried away trying to do a video, show something, end up messing up your baby that you spent tons of money for. Um, the other difference between vinyl and silicone is that where vinyl is still getting quite expensive, well, silicone is on the rise as well. Um, I think the the uh what has kept silicone a little bit more stable is that it's a lot more people painting than it used to be so it's not increasing as rapidly as vinyl has jumped up but right now the the economy is bad so a lot of people are lowering their prices a little bit more to accommodate the economical situation of the world so there's that but silicone is usually typically like two to three times more pricey than a vinyl so let's say a vinyl baby in today's world average price may cost you about fifteen hundred fully painted rooted some people charge less um the people that i buy from 
typically charge more, sadly, <laughs> for me, not for them. I understand it as being an artist myself. Um, but you know how that go. I want it for myself, but at the same time, when I get ready to shop, I want it. I want a good price. <laughs> um, but a full body would run anywhere from three thousand dollars and up i can tell you that i have done some babies less than that um but like i've seen this same size baby same sculpt and like caucasian version and people are selling them for like 4500 so that's the other thing that a lot of people don't understand either is that this art doesn't cost by the size it's the actual sculpt the actual work that dictates the price and the artist's reputation what they're used to fetching for a price um saw artists that are that's painting a kit full body uh announced that her full bodies will be the kit full body will be five thousand dollars and the kit costs a thousand dollars but when she completes it she said it will be five thousand dollars now people may be like oh my god that's ridiculous this that, and other well if i used to say the same thing but i kind of understand why some of them do that if their work typically goes for a certain amount of money they don't want to put their work out there for less than that they want their work to still hold its value and be the same price so it doesn't matter how much the kit costs, to be honest. It's the end result. And I think a lot of people don't really fully understand that. Because when you think about it, when you're looking at Reborns, um, the prototypes, they're getting the kit for free. Or... Even if they bought the kit, the kit cost them maybe 150 bucks at best, 200 at the most, and a lot of them sell for like four, six thousand dollars, and that's vinyl. And vinyl don't even hold the value as much as a silicone baby does on the resale market. So, if you want to really base it off of what the standards are in the industry. Um, they don't really base it off of the actual canvas itself. Um, I watched, um, uh, I think it's in a Dolly World on Instagram, posted on her storyline a poll. She said people were asking the question, if you had to give up one, which one would it be? The sculpt or the artist? So at first I was struggling, what does she mean by that? So I realized that what, I guess this is what I took from what she means by that, is will you, would you sacrifice having a sculpt less likely to be your type that you normally would collect and have your an artist that you really love paint it? Or would you... Um, or would you go after, would you prefer it be a nice sculpt and have an artist that you don't particularly necessarily care for? So like which one you value the most basically is like, are you valuing the sculptor, the sculpting, or you're more into the overall outlap, overall, um, results. Like, so... For me, I, I struggle with that because sculpting is very important to me. But at the same time, I was thinking to myself, well, here's the thing. There are some sculpts that I've seen done by artists that I'm not particularly fond of their work. And I'm like, I don't want it. And like the sculpt might not be like terrible just usually not just didn't look like it was my thing or usually not my type but then when another artist I see another artist painted I'm like oh my god I got to have this baby 
Um, and so based off of that, I had to go with artists that I, I, I mean, that I would, you know, I would rather not give up the artist. I would give up the sculpt. And that's, that's actually true to, to me on how I'm collecting in the moment. I, I want the perfect sculpt. I know it doesn't exist, but sometime if I, if, if I could get a baby to look and feel when it comes to silicone, feel the way I want it, look the way I, if I get a nice pour and it feels great and I love the painting and I love the way everything came together on it and it looks great in clothes and all this stuff, I'm more likely to fall head over heels for that than to have a baby that I love the sculpt, but I absolutely hate the painting. Um, I have had babies that I actually liked the sculpt but didn't really care for the painting as much and like sold it right away you know what I mean so I had to be honest and say as much as I scream sculpt 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 I had to be honest and say that I I would go for the painting but anyway guys if you got to this far and you want to answer that question which one would you choose over the other would you choose the sculpting or the art artist's work the artist or yeah the painting would the painting or the sculpting be the deal breaker for you all right guys this has been a long video thank you for watching and we'll catch you on the next episode